Hey guys, so this is a screen recording of me um, doing the problems from class uh, from the review sheet that I posted online. Um, I'm going to try to work these problems out. It's on my surface. Hopefully it helps you guys out. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, for now, I'm just going to work the problems. Uh, number one, I have convert 500 decigrams into grams. So I'm going to start off with 500 decigrams. Okay, and that's what I'm given. So I'm going to take decigrams. I'm going to try to get it into grams. So I'm going to think about how to do that. Um, the way that I do that is again, I look over here and I see what I want to cross out, which is decigrams. So I'm going to put decigrams on the bottom. And then I think about does deci, decigrams go to grams? And it does because they both have grams in common. So they for sure go into one another. So I'm going to put grams on top. And I always go by the golden rule, which is one by the prefix. I'm going to put a one by the prefix right here. And then I'm going to look at my chart. The chart's going to tell me that 10 to the negative 1 grams is 1 decigram. From there, I'm just going to cross it out. I'm going to uh, put that in my calculator. I'm going to do 500 multiplied by uh, shift log log negative 1. And I should come up with, let me tell you right now, grams just 50 grams that's what I was expecting um, again the reason why I'm multiplying by uh, 10 to the negative 1 is because I have 10 to the negative 1 on top I technically do have to divide, divide by 1 because it's on the bottom and divide by anything but that's on the bottom but dividing by 1 is sort of not necessary I mean if you divide any one number by 1 it's itself so number 2 is convert 91.2 grams into uh, kilograms Kilograms. Again, I start off with what I have, which is 91.2 grams. Then I multiply and I put grams on the bottom because grams is on top. Um, and I think, does grams go into kilograms? Well, they both have the same unit, so they should definitely go into each other. One of them is the base unit. The base unit is what they both have in common, which is grams. So um, I already got rid of my grams, so I think about it, does grams go into kilograms? Yes, so I put kilograms up top. I know that there's definitely a relationship. What's that relationship? Well, I want to put a one by the prefix as always. And then I'm going to think, what's kilo? Kilo is 10 to the third. So I'm just going to take 91.2 divided by shift log three. And I get 0 .0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0, 0, 0.0, same thing. 912, and my unit here is kilograms. Uh, let's see what number three is. Number three is convert 217.4 milliliters. So I'm just going to write ML, lowercase m, capital L for liters, uh, into centiliters. And then lowercase c, capital L. Um, well, now I look at this and I see, as opposed to the other problems, I have two base units. Excuse me, I have two prefixes. I have one which is the milli, and I have one which is the centi. Can I convert between them? Yes, because they both are the same thing. They both use uh, liters, um, even though they're not equivalent. Because uh, milliliters, if I have 500 milliliters, let's say it's not equivalent to 500 centiliters. But <clears throat> again, they both share the unit liters, so I will be able to convert between them. But because I have two prefixes, it's going to be a two-step. So two prefix, it's going to be at least two steps. I'm going to write that out over here. Now I'm going to write 217. Again, always start off with what you have. 217.4 milliliters. Um, and again, they both. what do they both share? Milliliters and centiliters. They both share liters, right? So I want to eventually get to... Uh, I want to use that liters as, as the stopover point between those two. So milliliters, I'm trying to get from milliliters into centiliters. What I'm going to do is always cross out the unit that I have first, which is milliliters. Um, over here, I already have my first prefix. I'm going to put um, one over there. And then I'm going to think what milli is. Milli is 10 to the negative third. And 10 to the negative third of the base unit, which is liters. Okay. And I'm going to 
go one step further. If I stop my problem here and have my answers in liters, which I don't want, I want it in centiliters. So I'm going to put liters on the bottom because I have liters up top over here. And I want to cancel out my liters. Um, do I put a 1 over here? A lot of people do that. That's a mistake. No, you want to wait. You want to wait until you have a prefix. Uh, liters does go into centiliters, right? Because they both share that liters mark. And now that I have a prefix, I can finally put my 1. Centi is 10 to the negative 2. In my calculator, I will put 217.4 multiplied by shift log negative 3 divided by shift log negative 2. And I would get 21.74 uh, centiliters. Uh, I forgot to cross off these units, but that's important. Uh, the reason why dimensional analysis is so cool is because um, centiliters, I know that's the unit because that's what's left over, right? Um, I crossed out everything else as I should have, and all my conversion factors are true. Uh, 10 to the negative third liters is 1 milliliter, and 1 centiliter is 10 to the negative 2 liters. Remember that as long as you have your 1 by the prefix, you should be good to go, um, as long as you know your chart. Number 4 is convert 602 terameters, so capital T, lowercase m into micrometers, which is that weird M or the mu. Okay. Um, as always, start off with what I have, 602 TM multiplied by, well, guess what we put on the bottom? Same unit as always. I want to cancel it out, cancel it out. I already have a prefix here. And remember, I have one prefix, I have two prefixes. So I'm going to need uh, to do at least two steps, at least two steps. <laughs> Um, and we think about one terameter, we always should think of 10 to the power of 12. And the base unit is what do these two have in common? Terameters and micrometers is meters, so my base unit is meters. Remember, I always want to get to the base unit first. Then I'm going to try to cancel out my meters and put that on the bottom. Um, so now that it's on the bottom, uh, we have to think, because um, I need to get from meters into micrometers, and I can definitely do that because they're both share the same base unit. Um, meters is the base unit again and you can go directly into this prefix so I'm going to put a 1 over here and 10 to negative 6 remember 1 always by the prefix cross out my meters I'm left out with micrometers which is what I want the way that I put this in my calculator is 602 multiplied by shift log 12 I press enter and then divide shift log negative 6 and then I get 6.02 times 10 to the power of 20 and again micrometers which is uh, a huge number but we can expect that because micrometers is really really small and terameters is probably uh, I mean it is probably the size of uh, it's, it's a large number it's a large number so let's convert uh, for number five convert 192.3 nanoliters So NL into uh, megaliters, megaliters, so capital M. -L. So again, as we've done in the past few problems, um, always start off with what I have. In this case, make the decimal a little bigger. I start off with what I have, 192.3. And my unit is nanoliters. I'm going to cross off the unit that I'm given. And I already have my prefix, so that's good. And I always want to put a 1 by the prefix. In this case, nano is my prefix. It's going to go into my base unit, which is between nanoliters and milliliters. It's just liters. Um, so that's uh, 10 to the power of negative 9. Okay. I'm going to cross out my nanoliters. Now that I have liters, I obviously want to cancel out my liters. And liters definitely gets me closer to mil, uh, megaliters, excuse me. So I'm going to put a 1 by the prefix again. 10 to the power of 6. 10 to the power of 6. Cross out my liters again. My answer is in megaliters, excuse me, which is what I want. So 192.3 times shift log negative 9 divided by shift log 6. So my answer is 1.923 uh, times 10 to the negative 13 
megaliters. Perfect. Uh, number six, we get to progress. Uh, number six, we have 1200 feet per second, and we want to get to inches per minute. Um, again, start off with what I have, 1,200 feet. And remember if I say, um, if it's a uh, derived unit, so it's feet over, let's say, seconds. I just put one second on the bottom. Um, the reason why is if I'm talking about a ratio, it's 1,200 feet per sec for one second. So I'm traveling, let's say, 1,200 feet, um, around a quarter of a mile or so, a little bit less. Um, I'm traveling 1,200 feet, and I'm doing that in a time frame of one second so um, what do we want to do we want to get somehow from feet per second to inches per minute so we're gonna convert the top we're gonna convert the top from feet it's gonna go to inches and from second it's gonna go to minutes so we're gonna involve it's gonna involve crossing out the top and the bottom so let's get rid of feet first okay um, this feet well first of all we always want to put what we have so we can just get rid of that now we have to think does feet somehow relate to inches and yet yeah, we definitely know that 12 inches is one feet or one foot it doesn't really matter um, even though it's the plural of feet um, the singular of feet is foot and one foot is 12 inches one feet you could say it's, it's the same as a foot so we can both cross them out we can cross out um, you know feet and not have a problem with it if I stop my problem here I'd be in inches again because inches is the unit that's left ignore the number but I, my answer would be in inches per second which is not what I want I want to get it into inches per minute so now I'm going to focus um, so this number is fine but I'm going to focus on crossing out my second and how would I do that I just put a second on top and again I want to get into minute do I know the relationship between a second and a minute I definitely do 60 seconds is one minute done and done um, now that that is complete I want to see if my units are correct so I have inches per minute which is what I wanted and all I put in the calculator is 1200 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 60 so 1200 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 60 is 800 64,000 inches for every one minute so if you put it in your calculator some of you guys will be confused why it's um, why the bottom is is just one because we get that ratio we get um, from putting in the calculator we get 864,000 um, and our units we know from our units that are left over we have inches and it's over one minute and it's over one minute so whatever number we get it's always going to be over one in this case the bottom is minute so it's going to be over one minute it's not that bad let's think about number seven 150 kilometers per hour into centimeters per second so 150 whoa, kilometers per hour into centimeters per second again our kilometer somehow needs to get to centimeter going to be up top we're going to stop at the base unit which is meters again they both share meters so it's going to be meters which is our base unit we're going to have to use that because I have two prefixes um, hour has to get into seconds hour has to get into seconds we can do that through the use of a minute okay so let's do 150 kilometers again per hour so it's over one hour On the bottom, cross out my kilometers. Let's get rid of kilometers first. Um, the kilometers, in order to get from kilometers to centimeters, I have to stop by meters, right? I have to stop by the base unit. I have two prefixes. I'm going to stop by the base unit. I have a prefix down here. Kilo is my prefix. I can put a one right there. Think of my relationship 10 to the power of three. Now that that's done, okay. Cross out kilometers. Cross out kilometers. My answer now would be in meters per hour. I don't want that. So now I'm going to cross out my meters. I'm going to try to get it into centimeters. Cross meters, cross meters. Where do I put my one? Again, by the prefix. And I put a tenth power of negative two on the bottom because that's what a centi is. 
Okay. So now that I've sent you here, that's cool. That's exactly what I wanted. But now I gotta get rid of the hours all the way over here. Even though my hour is over here, I can still get rid of it by putting up top. It doesn't matter. And I'm gonna think of one hour, which is 60 minutes. Again, trying to get closer to seconds here. And then I have minutes up top and seconds on the bottom. One minute is 60 seconds. Perfect, let's see what I can cross off. Hours and hours, minutes and minutes. And now I have seconds on the bottom, perfect. So even though I crossed out all these numbers, please remember that the units still hold true. And the way that I put this in a calculator is 150 multiplied by shift log three, divided by, divided by in this case, because there's 10 to negative two on the bottom, so divided by shift log two, or shift log negative two, excuse me, divided by 60 and divided by 60. Okay, and the answer I get is approximately uh, 4,166.66 with a bar over it uh, centimeters per second. Number eight. See what number eight is convert 589 feet per minute into kilometers per hour. So 589 feet per minute into kilometers per hour. Uh, okay, so feet has to eventually get to kilometers, and minutes has to get into hours. That's not a problem. That's a one-step conversion. How do I get from feet to kilometers? Do I know the relationship between f feet and kilometers? I don't, but I know the relationship between feet and mile, right? So I can go from feet to mile, and then from miles to kilometers. Remember, one mile equals 1.609 km. We'll be given that in an exam. Okay, let's work that out. Oh, and by the way, minutes to hours, um, you can just do that directly. You don't need to do anything. 589 feet per minute. So again, one minute on the bottom. Cross out my feet. Feet, uh, again, you're going to stop by mile. What's the relationship? One mile is 5,280 feet. Cross out, cross out. Don't want it in a mile, I want it in kilometers. So I'm going to keep going. Miles up top, miles on the bottom now. Going to cross out and go to kilometers. What's my relationship again? One mile is 1.609 kilometers. Cross a mile, cross a mile. Do I want it in kilometers per minute? No, but I definitely want it in kilometers over hour. So I'm gonna keep my kilometers up there. I'm gonna focus on the minute all the way to the bottom left. I'm gonna put it up top, and I'm gonna try to get hours in the bottom. And look at how it cancels out. Look at how minute over here cancels out with minute over here. And then I'm left with hour on the bottom. And I know that through 60 minutes being equal to one hour. Okay. Now putting this in the calculator, 589 divided by 5,280 multiplied by 1.609 multiplied by 60, I get 10.76, which is just the number that occurs 10.679 or 10.77. Um, and I'm going to Again, if you're wondering what the unit is, just look at what's not crossed out. Kilometers is not crossed out, and then hours is not crossed out. So 10.769 kilometers per hour, or 10.769 kilometers per one hour, doesn't matter, same thing. Uh, per hour is just per one hour. Um, but the good thing about dimensional analysis is that it tells us what unit is left over. Um, next up, I'm going to convert. 100 pounds per gallon. Convert 100 pounds per one gallon into whoa, into kilograms per quart. This would be given to you in an exam, but. Let's see here. Uh, one gallon, I believe, equals four quarts. Equals.
plus four quarts. That's weird. Okay, four quarts, and then one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. So, really, really quickly, uh, 100 pounds. Pounds is also LBS. Again, over one gallon. I'm just going to put on the bottom uh, LBS, I'm trying to get it to kilograms. I'm going to put kilograms on top. Now that one kilogram is 2.2. .2. 2.204 or something. Uh, it's fine. 2.2 .2 is fine. Um, and then cross those two out. Kilograms over gallon is not what I want. So I'm going to put gallon up top now to get rid of it. I'm going to put that one gallon is four quarts. Uh, cross out my gallons. Now I have kilograms over quarts, which is what I wanted. 100 divided by 2.2 .2 divided by 4. Because again, whatever's on the bottom, we divide. 100 divided by 2.2 divided by 4 is 11.363636. 11.36 is fine. Kilograms per quart. Kilograms per quart. And last but not least, number 10. Convert 71 feet per second into kilometers per minute. So, does feet go into kilometers? That's the question here. Um, we discussed that it does. Um, um, how does feet go into kilometers? Through the mile. And seconds goes into minutes. Seconds goes into minute through, again, 60 seconds is one minute. So that's not that bad. Um, I gave you the conversion up top. 71 feet um, for every one second. Now, again, feet on the bottom. 5280 goes into one mile. Again, mile helps us convert between feet and kilometers. Uh, one mile is 1.609 kilometers. Cross out, cross out, cross out, cross out. Okay. Kilometers per second. I don't want that, I want kilometers per minute, so I'm going to put, not kilometers over here, I'm done with the kilometers, I'm going to put second up top, and I'm going to put minute on the bottom, minute 60 seconds, um, cross out, cross out, now I'm left with minutes and kilometers, that's what I wanted, so I'm going to do 71 divided by 5280, multiplied by 1.609, Multiplied by 60. And I get 1.298 kilometers per minute. So dimensional analysis is a very, very cool trick to convert between units. Hopefully you guys understand that video. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions.